hey guys and welcome back for another video so if you see me munching on something i just got some grapes here a little bit of orange juice i am finishing off the rest of my lunch while i react to random things that i find on the internet well today we have an 825 pound woman from my city detroit who literally can't return home because she's just too fat she lives in an apartment I don't know how they got her out, especially seeing as how she was on the eighth floor, and I can't imagine they used an elevator. So, I mean, maybe they forklifted her out the window, <laughs> or the firefighters got together and rolled her down the stairs. I don't know, but anyway, she's getting ready to be discharged from the hospital, and I guess we're supposed to feel sorry for her because she can't go home. I don't know how she got to this position anyway, but I'm telling you, food addiction has to be the worst addiction possible. And I mean, I've seen the streets of Kensington and all of that. And don't get me wrong, that's terrible. There's something more disgusting about overeating. You can't even get out of the bed. You are overeating. The same place that you eat every day is the same place that you sleep every day. You're literally crapping and, and pissing on yourself all day while you eat. And not just normal amounts of food. To get to 825 pounds, you have got to be eating an absorbent amount. So you can only imagine, and I, and I hate to get so graphic, but you can only imagine what her stool is like. I don't know who was cleaning up after this woman. I don't know who was in charge of her life. But y'all should be ashamed of yourselves for letting this happen. If you're 825 pounds, you're not getting up and going to the store. You're not getting up and going to the refrigerator. Somebody is bringing that crap to you. <laughs> She got to 825 pounds. She's here, and it is a sad situation. Now, the hospital where she is at in Wayne, Corwell Health, Wayne, they want to discharge her, saying her condition has stabilized, possibly within the next 24 hours. However, her size has been deemed a fire hazard, meaning she can't return home to her apartment. It's a real possibility in the next 24, 48 hours, she won't have anywhere to go. I'm approximately 825 pounds. That's 825 pounds. I haven't been outside. Yeah, about two years I haven't been outside. A prisoner in her eighth story apartment in Wayne. The normal day is just, I'm just laying in the bed. I have nothing to do. A prisoner in her own body. I just can't keep living like this. I want to be free. 33 year old. And she's only 33. 33 years old, 825 pounds. I mean, so obviously she's been the type of person that's been fat her whole life. Parents failed her, obviously. And then as she became an adult, she failed herself. And uh, of course you're laying in the bed all day, man. What else are you going to do at 825 pounds? You can't get up. You can't do anything. At a certain point in time, you would think there would be a such thing as a wake up call. Like when you get to 500, 600 pounds. I mean, there's a show literally called My 600 Pound Life. And we see those people struggle to do everyday tasks like showering, grocery shopping, rearing children. And you manage to get to 825. Do you realize that it's almost half of a ton? A human being. That's the equivalent to a full-size horse. Like that is truly disgusting. Joanna Bates struggled with weight her whole life, relying lately on her mom for care. My mom is 53. You know, I don't want her to be taking care of me. I'm supposed to take care of her. The last few years, she's gotten worse. Back in 2018, my boyfriend was murdered in front of me. So I kind of hid from the world. And it just kind of got out of hand. Since then, she gained more than 200 pounds. Her lymphedema, which is extreme fluid buildup in her legs, like you see here, causes bed sores. Almost like a knife that's being turned. Constantly going through my legs. It got real bad last month. So I called 911 and they were trying to figure out a way to get me out the house. They wanted to tie me up to the ropes to bring me out the window, but I was scared. 15 first responders were able to fit her into the elevator. Oh, so I guess they did do the elevator. 15 first responders. So 15 people had to spend probably what took hours. I can't imagine this was something they were able to do in 15 minutes. So we're saying 15 people taken off of duty, you know, of being able to help other people who are in emergency situations because one individual is too fat. 
I'm sorry, that's disgusting. She should be ashamed of herself. Her mother should be ashamed of herself. How do you let your child get to this point? How do you overfeed your child to this point? As a parent myself, I want the literal best for my children. I'm not going to coddle you to the point where you are physically incapable of taking care of yourself. What a burden on society this is. This is awful. I, I don't feel any bit of pity. I'm sorry, I just don't. Because I think about the lives that may have been lost because those 15 responders were stuck helping one person when they could have been spread out evenly helping a lot of other people who had moments of emergency that night, but they all had to be helping her get her fat self out of that apartment. I hate to say it, you know, but in some situations, some people are so far gone that, I mean, what can you do for them? Literally. I mean, doctor now <laughs> may be able to help this woman, but he's all the way in freaking Texas. And this is, this is obviously in Detroit. How would she get to Texas? She can't fly in an airplane. They can't just drive her. She would av obviously have to use medical transport, which a person who's 825 pounds is clearly not working. So that means that she would have to rely on Medicaid. Who knows if Medicaid would pay for something like that? It's just a shame. This is just an utter ridiculous shame. And you, you hear about this kind of stuff all the time where it's like, it's a parent. You know, it's a, it's a lover. It's a so-called husband or wife who coddles these people and allow them to get to half a ton. That's disgusting. There would be no way possible I would do this to my child. I, I would never allow them to get in such a bad place of depression. You're comfortable sitting in a spot, crapping yourself. And I'm going to keep repeating it because you guys need the physical image of this. You need to imagine a person that's so fat. Imagine Jabba the Hutt. Someone so big, overeating, 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 can't get up. The only way that they're relieving themselves is in the exact position that they're in as they're eating. She's 825 pounds. You think her 53-year-old mama is able to lift her up well enough to clean her? She probably got that whole eighth floor smelling like a barn. And get her by ambulance to Corwell Health Wayne Hospital. But now her condition is controlled. She says the hospital and Medicare want her discharge. Her size makes her a fire hazard, so she can't go home either. They're trying to give me a what? Uh a lower floor but right now it's nothing available so it's like i'm gonna be i don't have nowhere to go Juana has until midnight Wednesday to make an appeal to Medicare to buy her time at the hospital, but she's also at the whim of Section 8 housing which can take weeks to process a move oh my god I mean, just a complete burden to society for no reason. Like you literally offer the world nothing at this point. You are living off of Section 8. You're getting Medicare. You are 33 years old, what should be an able-bodied individual who can contribute something to society. But instead, you are 100% a burden on the healthcare system. Now you're looking for somebody to come in and play cap and save a hold of you. When you did this to yourself, you and your weird mama. And I'm gonna keep saying and I'm gonna blame my mama because she can't get up like if you're 825 pounds and you need 15 people to move you out of an apartment like you're obviously not going to Myers and getting food somebody had to be doing it and it's her own mother what kind of mother puts their child in this position or allows them to so you literally overfed this girl her whole life to the point where she's 33 and she's almost a half a ton I just I I can't I can't say that I feel anything any pity you know because it's like one of those situations where you know just like a drug user or just like an alcoholic you get up and you make that conscious decision every day to do what you do to yourself despite all the help that's out there despite probably some people around you saying hey you should probably live a different lifestyle you wait till it is literally a dire situation now you're on the news begging probably for somebody to offer you a place to come to the only place that would be able to accommodate her in her situation, she's on oxygen, would probably be a rehabilitation center. Because why would you send her back to her apartment to what, get to 900 pounds? Make it even harder next time for them to remove her and get her to the hospital when she needs to go again? Because obviously the lymphedema is not going to go anywhere unless she loses weight. The only option for her at this point, if you actually care, would be a rehab center. And you're telling me Medicare is not willing to pay for that? What other option is there? To just send her back home to die? Like, this is stupid. You might as well just unplug the oxygen right now and save thousands of dollars a year. 
I mean, as harsh as that may sound, you might as well, because I mean, what other option is it going to be? What 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 other outcome would it be if she just goes back to the apartment? Her mama's all of a sudden going to get on a diet plan and help her eat right and exercise? No. She's going to go home, going to get even fatter, probably reach a thousand pounds. And then the next time they're getting her out of there, it's going to be to take her to a freaking crematorium. I mean, this is, this is ridiculous. I just want the help. I don't want to be like this anymore. I'm tired. My body is tired. And I don't want to. Corwell Health tells us they can't comment on specifics of her situation because of HIPAA. Now, Joanna says she's trying to find other living accommodations, but there's very few places that are affordable that can accommodate someone her size. That's unfortunate. Because like I said, her only option at this point would be to go to a rehabilitation center. But if Medicare is unwilling to pay for it, then what other option does she have other than to just go home and die? It's a shame that that's probably what's going to happen. But it's also a shame that she allowed herself to get to this point where you have no options. Before you reached 825, when you were still 700 pounds, when you were still 600, when you were still 500, she was probably still mobile at 400, 450, maybe even five. Why didn't you try to stop yourself from in this horrible downward spiral? I understand what grief is, what loss is. I understand what losing somebody very close to you is very much like. I've lost both of my parents. Okay young ages so i'm not um immune to grief or anything but i also know that you have to pick up the pieces and move on just because somebody is gone may have been in a horrific way doesn't give you the right to give up on yourself doesn't give you the right to just fall into addiction and poor eating habits and bad behavior to the point where you're a burden on your mother and society now I mean, really, you chose that for yourself. Now you're tired. You don't want to die. You should have thought about that 300 pounds ago. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. Don't forget to leave me a comment. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a blue heart if you want to. And I'll see you guys next time.